Hey guys, um, so this is going to be part six um, of the 12 valve Cummins rebuild. Um, so we got the, the crankshaft. This one's just going to be a short video because I'm doing it uh, um, like 825 at night. Um, so just going to be a short one on this one. But So we got the crankshaft in the lathe, so we're going to polish the crankshaft. Um, and this crank actually looks like it's in really nice shape, so it, it's not going to take too much to polish. And then what I'm going to do is uh, after I get it polished, we will um, give it a quick measurement, make sure all the measurements are good. And then I'm going to call it good for this video. So this one's going to be a real short one, but just to show you the process um, of going through. And then uh, tomorrow I should have the block. I'll have the block all washed up, get it on a stand so we can do some measurements and stuff tomorrow and maybe get the crankshaft set as long as all the measurements work out. Um, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so. So for you guys that have never seen one of these, this is what you polish the crank with. Um, it's basically just a, an emery cloth belt um, that spins the opposite direction of the way you're going. So like this process isn't really very hard, but you, know, you have to have the polish, polisher and then some way of spinning the crankshaft. I have this big lathe, so I use the lathe for doing it. Um, but the, the setup that a lot of guys use is kind of like this, um, but it just has two centers on each side and then the crankshaft spins really slow. So depending on what the setup is, just I have the big lathe, so I use the lathe. But. So anyways, we'll get after uh, polishing this thing up here. So that's going once around and you can see that you can still see kind of some markings you can't feel them though that one you can maybe feel just a tiny little bit but lots of times the crankshaft if it's like that especially for the power application this engine is going to be doesn't really matter now also take into consideration that when you have when you have this is right here there's actually gonna be a slot in half the bearing where the oil actually travels, so nothing actually touches it. But anyways, I'm gonna go one more time around. That's basically one time on per journal. Um, I'm gonna go one more time around, um, see what it looks like after that. So like I said, there's a couple little spots you can't feel them. You can still see some little spots. There's nothing to be felt though. Polished up real nice. I'm happy with that. I'm <clears throat> happy with that. So, And really when it comes down to it now, if you have a couple little marks in a crankshaft and if the mark is low, so after you polish it, all your marks are going to be low marks. So if you have a little low mark in the crankshaft, it actually isn't going to hurt anything. Now, there again, if you're a high performance engine, something that's gonna spin a lot of RPM, you really want the surface to be almost perfect. Um, and that's where you really get into really polishing crankshafts to make them like absolutely perfect. But on these things, being a little tiny low spot and you can't feel it, you can see it, I'm never really too worried about it. Um, you, you, you're not gonna have an issue. <clears throat> and I've run hundreds and hundreds. Like this one's actually in really nice shape for what it is especially for the engine damage and stuff that we've seen. So, and even bearing damage for that matter. There was a bunch of bearing damage you guys seen in the first parts. So, like I said before, what we're gonna do here, get in here. <coughs> and you really should wear a mask when you're doing that, but Being that it's late, I don't feel like getting all suited up for one crankshaft. I usually do a bunch of crankshafts at once. <sighs> and like I said, you want to you want to measure in a couple spots on it just to make sure that everything is round. And 
and all three measurements are the same. So I'll do the same thing. And I'm gonna go through and measure every journal. But just so that you guys don't have to painstakingly watch me measure every journal, because that would make the video a lot longer than it really needs to be. And like I said, usually, you know, like I'll measure across here like this, or get my hand in the right spot here. I measure across, let's see, I measure across like this. I'll measure across like this, so three spots across here. And then usually I'll turn, yeah, turn the crankshaft and then measure. So, you know, you measure it across here, let's say, then I measure across here to make sure that the, the journal isn't egg-shaped or egg shaped this way, so concave or convexed, um, and make sure everything's round. And as long as everything measures out round, I, this thing polished up looked nice, it looked nice to begin with. I'm not really too concerned um, about it, but I, I will measure everything all out. And when I, so I measure everything all out. And then when we do check bearing clearances and stuff, you're gonna take the measurements that I have off of all these journals, cross-reference with the measurements of the sizes of the journals with the bearings sorry the mains with the bearings so the main boards with the bearings and then that's going to give us our oil clearance on what our main bearings will be and then same with the rods so we'll do the same thing with the rods we're going to torque all the rods down with the with the bearings in there and then we're going to measure them all see what all of the specs are for that and then we'll reference the sizes off of all these so it's like it's one of those things guys like i i always say to people you know, to assembling an engine. So, you know, for us, when we assemble an engine, it literally takes, assemble a 12 valve to a long block. I would say just the assembly, the head already being assembled, it takes us a solid, a solid eight to eight and a half hours. And that's after all of the, you know, with the, pol the crank is polished, the block is done. You know, cleaning everything, you know, that like after that's all done. It's just the engine assemblies. So checking um, main bearing clearances and rod bearing clearances and end play and piston protrusion. And if you have too much piston protrusion, lots of times we surface the pistons off so you can still run a stock head gasket, depending on how far it is out. Um, you know, like if it's just a couple of that, we use a 10 over. I personally don't like using more than a 10 over if you can help it. Um, but there again, I prefer to have everything, you know, the same. But anyways... So that's going to wrap it up for this video, I think. Like I said, I didn't want to make the video too long. I think I'll probably leave most of it in there, but I didn't want to make the video too long. And like I said, I'm going to do the same. So measuring, I'm going to do the same thing on these journals. You measure in three spots and then measure in three spots to make sure everything is good. And then I'm going to take the crankshaft. It's going to go back in the wash tank. It's going to get washed again. And then I will brush all of these holes out individually. And then I brake clean the whole thing down after that. And then if we're not assembling it right away, then it's going to get put into a bag. So being that I'm going to assemble this, uh, hopefully we will be putting this in the, in the block tomorrow. Um, when we do that tomorrow, um, you know, I can just slip a bag over it and I, I don't have to bag it, bag it. So anyways, um, like, subscribe. Um, if you've got any comments, uh, comments, let me know if, if there's something else that you want me to show you um, on this part, um, you know, let me know. And yeah, and we'll go from there. I will uh, get another video up tomorrow. I'm hopefully going to maybe do two or maybe three videos tomorrow. Um, I got a couple other little videos that I wanted to do, um, which is not so much um, to do with uh, this 12 valve build, um, but it'll be a couple other videos that I said to a couple guys that I'd make up. So anyways, uh, catch you on the next one.